Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. We're watching a clip of The Herd with Colin Cowherd uh, talking about Baker Mayfield. It's been reported that he's refusing to, you know, take a hometown discount. And I feel super validated because I was just talking about Baker Mayfield the other day. Um, I want to hear what Colin has to say. I'm want to see. I'm curious if he thinks that that's you know appropriate or not because Baker should just be so grateful that he's still even in the NFL. And if he thinks that he's going to be commanding some sort of sixty million dollar deal, he is delusional. Baker always thinks that he's faster than he really is, that he's stronger than he really is, that he has a better arm than he really is. I honestly believe that Baker thinks that he is as good as Patrick Mahomes, but the only difference is, is that Patrick Mahomes has Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey, and Baker doesn't. He's delusional. So let's see what Colin has to say, and we can break it down from there. They get their quarterback. Baker Mayfield has said he hopes to remain in Tampa, but according to Diana Rossini, he's not willing to take a hometown discount to stay with the team. So now we're hearing Patriots and, and uh, Baker, no hometown discount. Colin, I know he had some issues with his uh, family member and some financial stuff. No. If Baker's out here saying, like, I need $45 million a year, I, I don't know if – is there is there a price point where Tampa says, not for us, we're going to move on? Yeah, everybody's got a price point. Okay, what is it? I don't know what it is, but it's – you know, I'm not – I don't want the first number to be in the fours. But I if you have to go mid to high threes, yeah, I think that's very reasonable. So Dak's going to get 55, maybe, and Baker's going to settle for 35? Well, Dak's winning 12 games a year every year. Dak has been more consistent as a personality. Uh, so let's be fair to Dak. Dak has, his career has been a B-plus career. Baker's had B-plus moments, but there's been some turbulence. Okay. And so I remember, when I'm paying you, there's a lot of things I'm paying you for. Your production, your talent your intangibles, your maturity. Now, I think Baker's pivoted, turned a corner on the maturity okay. stuff. Um, but I but I think, you know, you, you like Cousins and Dak, I know exactly what I'm getting. Baker can still run a little hot and cold. Um, and I don't think, I think I'd pay Dak more than Baker, what even if, though I think Baker throws a better ball when he has time to throw. Baker sees Tua, let's say Tua gets $50 million a year. I think Baker throws a better ball than Tua. Okay, so what does Baker say if Tua gets $50 million a year for my, which sounds insane. Well, he's going to want $50 million, and I would say, well, one guy was in the MVP voting, and one guy won a bad division. Yeah, one guy won a playoff game last year. That was me. Don't make me hate Baker. I'm not hating Baker. He has a market. I've said this. I think Tampa's perfect. But there is a price point. And my price point with Baker would probably be, okay, if, if you're not going to do it, I'll go get Kirk Cousins for 40 if you won't go for 34 to 35. I'll just go get Kirk Cousins and get more consistency, but maybe not the high-end throws that Baker can make. Everybody's Okay. There is a lot to unpack there. Whew. Bringing up Kirk Cousins. Okay. First off, they won a playoff game. He beat the Eagles, who they completely have given up. Everyone knows that at this point, that the Eagles literally could have had six wins that whole season. So beating the Eagles in that game meant absolutely positively nothing, okay? I mean, literally, Troy Aikman was like, I don't even know what I'm watching. And Joe Buck were like, I, you know, when we talked to the Eagles you know, before the game, they just already looked defeated and had no energy. They had waving, waved the white flag. So this idea that they beat them was impressive. It was not. Okay. So let's just like stop with that nonsense. Okay. He won a bad division in a wonky year where a lot of teams were kind of like happy to lose because it, again, it was referred to as the Caleb sweepstakes. Like this idea. And then also how Colin said that Baker turned the corner in terms of his personality, you know, of, of of being more mature. I reject that. I really, really do. Just because you have one good season when he was already down and out. We see this all the time um, where you have people, right, in a relationship. Maybe you have done this or you've had this done to yourself where you, you know, someone breaks up with you or you break up with them and they're like, no, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm going to be better, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. You're everything to me. I'm going to text you all the time. I'm going to call you all the time. I'm going to do all the things that you want me to do. We're going to go out for dinner. We're going to do all these things. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, I'll give you another chance. And in the first like week, a couple weeks, a month, 
you're all on your best behavior and everything's good. And then everything goes right back down to how it was. And then boom, you either finally break up or you repeat the cycle again and again. Hopefully you just break up. So that's what it is with Baker. Okay, we know who Baker is. He was hanging on by a thread and knew he needed to be on his best behavior. He knew he got punched in the face and couldn't be Mr. Cocky Baker and had to just be a good, you know, a good uh, teammate, good player, had to just do everything that he needed to do to ask for. He was in no position to give any pushback. And then, you know, that's what he did. And so he was successful, relatively speaking. And now we just think, well, this is who he is. This is who he is. He's just the best. He's great. See, I told you he was a good quarterback. It was Cleveland that was bad. And it was, you know, uh, the Carolina Panthers that were bad. You know, look what he did with Sean McVay and the Rams. And it's like, no, 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 no. Okay. I mean, this whole idea, put it this way. If Baker was legit, Sean McVay would have said, hey, Stafford keeps getting banged up. I think he might be getting surgery in the offseason, or he already had surgery. We don't really know. He's getting older. Baker, why don't you just stay here as a backup quarterback for, like, you know, an, another season or so, and we can develop you, get real good, and, you know, sta- you know, like, he didn't do any of that type of stuff. He was just like, well, all right, whatever, see you. So this whole idea that Baker is actually legit, or that he's now all of a sudden a good quarterback that you should be paying all this money to, whether it be 50, 55 million Dak Prescott money to a tongue below money is so insane to me. Um, it's so insane to me. Um, Tua, you can make the argument, he's still being developed. And you got to wash away the, the beginning of his career because he didn't have an actual coach that could develop him. So we're washing that away. Does Tua have limitations? Absolutely. You know, undeniably. But he also has great intangibles and people absolutely positively love Tua. Love, love, love Tua. Okay? People do not love Baker Mayfield. They do not love, love, love Baker Mayfield. And say what you will about Dak. Dak is such a better quarterback than Baker. And I'm not even a big Dak fan. I've been saying that the Cowboys need to figure something out with Dak. I call Dak out all the time. But Dak, I would, I will take Dak every single day of the week over Baker Mayfield and it's not even close it's not even a question it's not even well what about no 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 Dak owns the mic Dak can own the locker room better even though people aren't crazy about him necessarily in Dallas but that's just because they got some jerky personalities like a Micah Parsons in there which I think Micah would be disruptive in a locker room no matter where he is um but I think Dak gets a lot of respect ownership loves him the fans love him he's someone that you want to see succeed that you want to root for he takes care of the mic he's a good button up person he is a good team but he is someone that you you know you can appreciate having part of your organization yes do you want him to be better yes do you want him to step up more in the playoffs obviously right you want you always want those things but you can't always have that so you know the reason why i'm bringing this up is because if you have to choose between a Dak or baker may baker mayfield i will choose Dak every day of the week and again it's not even close to me it's really not i've always taken issue with some of baker how he approaches things and and again sure we can chalk it up to him just being mature but it just stands out to me so much i judge people a lot off of behavior and when he called out like the physical therapy staff in in cleveland and again i do give people the benefit of doubt of just being young and stupid and you know everyone makes mistakes everyone says something but that Again, I know from direct personal experience how hard those people work, how much they care, how passionate they are, and relative to the the actual athletes on the field, they don't get paid. It's not even close, and yet they make so much sacrifice, so much sacrifice, and they feel the pressure, too, of making sure that the players stay healthy, get healthy, and, and, you know, believe me, they feel it. I've worked a ton of with physical therapists just for my own sheer injuries um both personally and professionally in that regard and it's just like for him to like call them out that is just a, a massive red flag to me and i can see it here i mean, just look at his face but you could just see it here where he's unwilling to take a hometown discount because he's like well i had a great season now give me all this money and it's like bro your nfl career has been failing 
you had a semi good year and I get it, get your money. I do get it from a business perspective. Get your money, get your money, get your money. I do get it. I really honestly do. And I don't know what they're, what they're, what the issue is, right? Is it they, he wants 55 and they're like, well, we're only going to give you 30 or he wants 55 and they're like, well, we only want to give you 50. Like it, it's hard to know. Like, are they close? Does he want more guaranteed money? You know, does he want a longer deal, a shorter deal? I don't really know, but I just think you have to look at it where there's just still no humbleness. He thinks that he has as much value as a Tua, as a Dak. Now, if we wanted to just put these three players here and put them in a circle and say, are they really that much more different from a wins and losses perspective or what they can do on the field? Like um, Colin said, uh, Baker throws a prettier ball than, say, a Tua. That's fine. But I keep banging this drum, and it seems like a lot of fans uh, don't seem to appreciate this enough. And I think it's maybe because they haven't potentially spent enough time in a locker room and on a bench and on the field with the act with players, you know, when you're actually playing personalities matter so much, so much. And a lot of people say, well, it doesn't matter. I don't care. You know, if people like them or not, or they get along or not, it's about what you do on the field and this, that it's so much more than that. Especially when you're a quarterback, you need, your team needs to be behind you. They need to have in a lot of ways, an undying love and respect for you, especially when you're the only, when you're the quarterback specifically, maybe not all positions, but when you're the quarterback, definitely. And so that's the, that's the difference maker. That is, that is just the absolute difference is that those are the things that Baker, that Baker does not have when compared to other teams. Um, and it's why when you see a lot of other quarterbacks where they don't get the benefit of the doubt or they don't get right, like, People are not lining up to to support Mac Jones, even though the head coach got fired, right? The King Goat himself, Bill Belichick, got fired. And they were like, this is a dumpster fire. We got a, we got a clearing house right now. But no one's saying, see, now Mac Jones is going to be great now that we got rid of him. Like, no, no one's really saying that because people don't love him. People didn't. One of the best examples of this is Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield, okay? He is a better quarterback. He's a great quarterback. But he does not get the benefit of the doubt because for whatever reason, people do not like him in the locker room. And then once you get kind of tagged as that, as well as being scapegoated on multiple teams, it's like anytime you're on a new team and that team starts losing because of him, because of him. Um, so Baker has to be careful here because if Baker demands all this money and tries to really like, you know, put the the um, Tampa in a corner and then he doesn't show out and doesn't play great. The fans will go nuts. The team, the locker room will go nuts. And then before you know it, you're in like a Russell Wilson situation where it's like, well, do, can we just cut him? Can we just take the dead money hit? What do we do here? And that's what you end up in. Seriously. I mean, that's what you know, that, that's what ends up happening. So if you're a smart franchise, you would say, Baker, this is who you are. We're not paying you $55 million. Okay. You are a 30, 35, you know, not necessarily 30, but, you know, in 30s range type quarterback, maybe low 40s. But, you know, the way this deal is going to be structured is, is like, we got to get players around you. Because please tell me who thinks that if you pay Baker Mayfield some legit substantial money and you can't really build around him, please tell me who thinks that you're just going to be able to have Baker Mayfield lead you to a Super Bowl. I just, I, I just don't see it. You really, after all the years that you've been watching Baker, you really think that he's going to be able to step up in a large way where he'll be able to outduel Patrick Mahomes? No. You think he's going to be able to outduel um, Joe Burrow? No. How about Josh Allen? No. How about Justin Herbert? No. He's not going to be able to do that again. He can't even. He can't even outduel Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins. Not happening. Not happening when the, both teams are actually healthy, ready to go, and engaged. He was able to win during a very wonky, weird year. And when he played up against Detroit, it wasn't particularly close. When you look at the other players, the other teams in there, you know, if we take Dak and um, Jalen out, because those were just two teams that just collapsed. Um, look at what we have here. You know, Goff better, Stroud better, uh, Mahomes better. Uh, 
what's it? Joe Flacco was better. Joe Flacco is like 97 years old. I would rather have Joe Flacco sign him and be like, all right, man, let's bring you over. The Ta- Tampa has a great experience of getting hot, of getting old quarterbacks and winning. So I just reject this notion. And to me, the fact that this story even came out is Tampa's way of saying, hey, this is what we're dealing with here. We, we want to be able to construct a good team, but we need Baker to be on board and Baker is not playing ball. They wanted that to be out. Baker doesn't want that out because this looks worse for him than it does for Tampa. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Um, I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions, let's get into some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really, really does help with the visibility in the algorithm, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and see you next time.